Laramie sits at over 7,000 feet in elevation in the southeastern corner of Wyoming. It was named for French-Canadian trapper Jacques Laramie, who disappeared in the nearby mountains in 1820 and was never heard from again. Laramie once had a saloon with a reputation for violence and outlaws, called the Bucket of Blood, ironically owned by a local marshal. The city came to worldwide prominence in 1870, when for the first time six women served on a formal jury, and later that same year, women voted in a general election for the first time in Wyoming's history. While Idaho is known as the Gem State, Laramie is known as the Gem City. It was home to the first electrical plant in the Rocky Mountains, which lit up the night sky like a gem. It also has a famous name in basketball history. Kenny Sailors played at the University of Wyoming in the 1940s and is known as the inventor of the jump shot, replacing the two-handed, flat-footed set shot. He developed the shot while playing against his older brother, who was six inches taller than him. You know, another fun fact about uh, Laramie is uh, it, it gets pretty cold this time of the year. I'm no Rick Lance, but I will do my best impression as uh, I give you a good quick weather update here. It's currently 25 degrees. Uh, as we get closer to the game, closer to 9 o'clock at the end of it, it should be dropping down to around 15 degrees. Uh, and so far, the uh, there hasn't been much wind, but we are expecting to see a little bit of wind. And that's something that can disrupt both the passing game and the kicking game. Now, last week, the Broncos were not too phased by the elements in Reno. The offense put up a towering 41 points, while the defense locked up the Wolfpack to just three points. And games like that, it's not just toughing it out and the hard conditions. It's about preparing to be ready for whatever they'll face. And the Broncos have proved that no matter what, they're prepared to come out and play fast. It doesn't matter who we play, it doesn't matter the conditions, prep so you can play confident, and all the other things should not matter if you handle your prep the right way. So if it's two degrees, if it's snowing, awesome. You guys are joking pregame, this is football weather. It's like, yeah, let's go to work. We worked some wet ball stuff uh, the last couple weeks just in practice. I think the snow affected more the vision of the receivers, that ball was hard to, hard to track. We had some issues in warm-ups, but you know, they, they snapped out of it pretty quick. There's pros and cons to either side of the ball. I would, just, I would assume it's gonna be a little bit harder to catch, but I would assume it's easier when the receiver knows I'm gonna plant at five yards and a DB's gotta react to be easier for that receiver to get in out of his breaks. So I think it's, there's a yin and yang to both sides. The cool part about a weather game like that is that's, that's true football, right? There's a grit part to it in those games that you thrive on. If it turns into a game where, where you can't throw the ball the same way, that we want to be able to grind it out defensively. And so you want to be able to pride yourself on that.